Okay, folks, well, welcome to Coffee with Job. This is uh, for Friday morning. And I was going to say this is the end. It's not the end, but we are hoping to go on holiday for a couple of weeks. And so I won't be doing these. I'm trying to stay away from cameras and internet as much as possible. Uh, returning on Coffee with Job will return on Monday the 31st of, of January. And... Uh, you know, well, first of all, uh, we may be here next week. Who knows? Uh, in James, it says, who are you to say you're going to this city or that city? It is dependent on both myself and Annabelle passing a COVID, COVID rats test on Sunday. And there are so many people. Uh, there are a million Australians who've had COVID in the past month. So who knows? Uh, it's possible that we may fail. And I may be here with you again on Monday, but... Um, just keep a look out but I think God willing we'll be away for a couple of weeks and appreciate the break but I do want to come I think yesterday's passage was phenomenal and I think this is as well and in the light of news that I hear about government here or in China or in America or currently Boris Johnson in Britain or Nicola Sturgeon this is a great passage Job 34 verse 16 if you have understanding, hear this. Listen to what I say. Can someone who hates justice govern? Will you condemn the just and mighty one? Is he not the one who says to kings, you are worthless, and to nobles, you are wicked, who shows no partiality to princes and does not favor the rich over the poor, for they are all the work of his hands? They die in an instant, in the middle of the night. The people are shaken and they pass away. The mighty are removed without human hand. His eyes are on the ways of mortals. He sees their every step. There is no deep shadow, no utter darkness where evil doers can hide. God has no need to examine men further that they should come before him for judgment. Without inquiry, he shatters the mighty and sets up others in their place. Because he takes notes of their deeds, he overthrows them in the night and they are crushed. He punishes them for their wickedness where everyone can see them because they turned from following him and had no regard for any of his ways. They caused the cry of the poor to come before him so that he heard the cry of the needy. But if he remains silent, who can condemn him? If he hides his face, who can see him? Yet he is over individual and nation alike to keep the godless from ruling, from laying snares for the people. It's, it's just such a great passage. Imagine our leaders going through this and we're telling them this. If you've got understanding, grasp this. If you hate justice, can you govern? Justice is so important. There's so much hypocrisy uh, and so much injustice and wrongdoing. And God will cause rulers to answer to that because rulers are servants of God and they are there to bring justice. God is the ultimate judge, this tells us, who does not show partiality to the rich over the poor. And yet our systems are designed to show partiality. I think without Christianity especially. So that, you know, I look at what's even in COVID, the rich nations over the poor nations, in climate change, the rich can afford the fancy electric cars. The poor are being told, don't burn coal to keep yourself warm. And God doesn't show partiality to the rich over the poor. When you have political systems where people can buy influence, they can buy peerages, in, as in the UK, or they promise jobs, or um, you know they seek government subsidies. Those who got money make money, get even more. And I love this bit: the mighty are removed without a human hand. They're so confident and so sure, and God removes them. I think of the fall of Nikolai Ceausescu is one of the most amazing ones that I, I saw unfold, not because I was in Romania, but I just saw it on the news. From absolute dictator to death within a year. And there are many others as well. How the mighty have fallen. He says, there is no deep shadow where evildoers can hide. See, a ruler may think, I've got control. And I can hide things. But no. 
There is no deep shadow where you can hide from God. And then I love verse 24. Without inquiry, he shatters the mighty. What do our politicians do? Oh, we'll have an inquiry. Let's set up an inquiry. And inquiries are often not really about inquiring. They're about delaying. They're about obscuring. God doesn't need an inquiry. He knows. And then again, verse 28. They caused the cry of the poor to come before him so that he heard the cry of the needy. God hears the cries of the poor. He hears the cries of the needy. And I love this. Verse 29. He is over individual and nation alike to keep the godless from ruling. We have to pray that the godless would be kept from ruling. Whether they are religious godless, you know, the hypocrites, or whether they're the secular godless who think that they are God, who think that they know everything that's best for us and, and can control us. I wonder how often you pray for kings and rulers and those in authority, and how often we pray that they would be godly people. I do. I, I have, um, whatever I think of them personally, I have Boris Johnson, Nicholas Sturgeon, Scott Morrison, Joe Biden on my prayer list and, and many others as well. Xi Jinping, I pray for Xi Jinping that he would be converted as would the others as well if they're not already. But there, we'll leave it there. Um, let's pray that the godless wouldn't rule over us and I hope to see you again, not this coming Monday, uh, but uh, you'll see me, you might even see me a lot more because I'd be in isolation if that was the case. But hopefully we'll see you again in a fortnight. And please don't forget about this. Feel free to come back. And thank you again for, for all the comments and encouragement that you sent. I, I love doing this stuff with Job. And if it's benefited any of you at all, then that is very, very much uh, a wonderful bonus. God bless you and see you in a fortnight. Bye.